Hello everyone and welcome to some uh, very exciting news from the Super United Blitz tournament currently being played in Zagreb, Croatia. Magnus has defeated everyone. Yes, I'm sure you've already heard it as you do have access to um, uh, the internet. Magnus has achieved the perfect day and although it is not considered a Bobby Fischer prize because uh, even though he's a 9 out of 9, it's not the end of the tournament. There are still 9 more, more rounds and uh, something that I did not know, if someone wins all of the games uh, as Magnus is doing here, uh, he will receive the, the so-called Bobby Fischer prize, which is uh, $64,000. I guess that they made it that way, sort of $1,000 for each square on the chessboard, uh, which is, um, well, Magnus said in an interview after this game that uh, he probably played uh, the, the best chess he ever played and that he doesn't think that he will be able to repeat this success ever again. Uh, but who knows, tomorrow is a new day. Uh, we'll see what happens. So let's see. Uh, how he defeated Konstantin Lupulescu, uh, who is having a, a, a rough tournament, but he is the, the uh, lowest seed of the tournament, so it is, uh, well, it, it is within reason to expect that. Uh, so let's see uh, how it went. Uh, Konstantin has the white pieces, and he opened with d4. Magnus went for knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to c3, and he goes for pawn to d5. The queen's gambit declined, uh, and Konstantin goes for the exchange variation. Captures, captures, and bishop to g5. We have bishop to e7, e3, and now standard moves here are castles and c6, but Magnus goes for pawn to h6, which is extremely rare, only a handful of games, but Magnus himself already played it this year uh, in the Tata Steel Masters tournament uh, against uh, a very strong grandmaster, uh, Parham Maksulu, and he defeated him with the black pieces. Uh, so here we have uh, bishop to h4, now comes bishop to g4, and in that game, a queen to a4 check was played by Maksulu, but here... Now we have just bishop to e2 blocking this attack uh, and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game and this is exactly what Magnus wants if he is to play one more game for a win. And it's very hard, you're on 8 out of 8 so of course you, even if you lose, even if you draw, you are leading the tournament, chances are you will be doing very well but you kind of want to, you are that close to 9 out of 9, you really want to make it 9 out of 9 and the Yasser uh, said during his commentary that, uh, you know, if someone uh, asked him uh, in, in the first round of the Blitz, what are the chances of Magnus winning this with 9 out of 9, he said, of course, 0. Uh, but now, now that you're on 8 out of 8, you're kind of hoping for a 9 out of 9. So bishop captures, knight g captures, I need to end just pawn to c6. We have castles by both players. And now queen to c2. Constantin playing uh, very nice here. We have rook to e8 and now rook 8 to e1. Knight b to d7, nicely continuing development, and f3, adding support for e4 later on. Pawn to b5 by Magnus and now king to h1. Always a useful prophylactic idea. Rook c8 preparing pawn to c5 and now rook to d1. We have pawn to b4, uh, uh, knight to a4 now guarding the c5 square and Magnus does advance it. Pawn to c5. The queen is on to c2 so it makes sense. Uh, d captures knight, captures and now bishop captures on f6. Uh, knight captures on a4, queen captures, bishop captures and now knight to f4. And here we have rook captures on e three knight captures on d5 attacking the rook uh, and the bishop and rook to e2 but now Constantine plays this beautiful knight to c3 attacks the queen and the rook on e2 uh, but Magnus had all of this planned he plays queen to e8 and attacks the undefended queen on a4 I say undef uh, undefended because if the rook is captured then the queen is undefended so uh, here you should uh, uh, capture on b4 or trade queens. Uh, Constantine doesn't want to play this active looking game with the rook on e2 against Magnus. So he decides to trade queens. Queen captures. We have rook e captures back on e8 as the rook was hanging here. And now you have to move the knight. Knight to d5. Again attacks the bishop and the b4 pawn. And while you could go for something like captures, captures. And it's probably something 99% of players would do. Not Magnus. He trades uh, this beautiful bishop and his uh, kingside structure. Uh, for activity as this is blitz and activity matters most he plays rook to c2 now he wants to play rook uh, 8 to e2 and then put pressure on the white king uh, and then it will be very difficult to defend of course the position is still very much a draw but uh, with little time on the clock it's hard to defend knight captures on b4 rook captures on b2 and now again knight to d5 because this will come with check and now rook e to e2 putting pressure on the g2 pawn but of course Constantin will grab the bishop with check first messing up Magnus's pawn structure and just play rook to g1 Magnus plays rook captures on a2 and now we have this rook and king endgame uh, rook and pawn uh, endgame uh, where 
Magnus has a past A pawn. So this is, again, a draw, uh, but you have to be very careful. And you only have one active rook. This one, unfortunately, has to remain here to guard the G2 pawn. So Magnus has all the moves in the world, and Constantin really left with rook B1, rook D1, rook B1, rook D1, uh, or if he can... Uh, you know, try to create something with one rook. So he doesn't want to play passive. He goes for rook to d7 uh, and now just pawn to a5. Of course, he wants to put the rook behind the pass pawn, which is what you always want to do, whether you're attacking or defending. And now king to g7. Magnus starts making his way uh, over to the white king. Pawn to h3, pawn to h5, king to h2, and now pawn to h4. Uh, stopping the king from entering the game, rook to c7, and now rook to f2. Magnus with the threat of rook captures on f2 as the g-pawn is now pinned, and not a lot of good ways to um, uh, go about this. Uh, you, while you could defend it with something like rook to c3, then you're very passive. You're just going to wait for Magnus to finish all of all of his moves, and then uh, you will probably lose the game uh, some, some way. So uh, Constantin decides to go active. He gives up the f3 pawn for the h4 pawn, which will give his king a bit more room to breed. Uh, Magnus goes for it. Rook captures on f3. Rook to g4 check first. King to f8. And now rook captures on h4. We have pawn to f5 by Magnus. And now rook back to c4. We have king to g7. And Constantine unfortunately has to move the rook back and forth. Rook to d4. We have pawn to f4. King to h1, and now, of course, this is a threat, so you move the rook. Rook f2, f2, but Magnus was planning to play this either way, as he needs to get this pawn all the way to f3. The idea is f3, captures, and rook to h2, checkmate, of course. So rook to d3, and now pawn to a4. Magnus continues pushing forward. Rook to c3, and now king to f6. We have rook to d3, and now pawn to a3, rook to b3, and only now pawn to f3, once uh, all the pieces have um, uh, been put to the right pl uh, place. Uh, rook captures on f3, but the, I mean, there isn't anything better. Rook captures, g captures, and here Magnus just plays rook to b2, and he was in this position on move 45 that Constantin Lupulescu resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. The problem is the white king is on the back rank, and there is no defense against a2 and rook to b1. Uh, doesn't matter what you play, if uh, rook to a1, just a2, uh, the white king cannot go up the board, whatever you play, next move is rook b1 check, you have to trade, and uh, he will get a queen into the game, and other moves uh, aren't uh, much better, uh, whatever you play, r rook to g4, again a2 is coming, and there's no defense, if you play rook to a4 now, same thing, rook b1 check, king goes up the board, and you get a queen, uh, he will have to give up the rook for, for the queen, and that's it. So yeah, really incredible. Magnus uh, plays a very weird, uh, a very weird line with this. Uh, not not weird, but uh, it's not played as often with this h6 move. Uh, really an offbeat approach. But he already defeated Maxulu in classical, so he thought, oh why not? Let's uh, try it against Lupulescu. He probably has some sneaky moves uh, <laughs> ready. And uh, he made a very, very practical decision here, uh, if you guys uh, remember when we reached this position where uh, after this knight to d5 move was played, he played rook to c2 instead of going for, well, the natural looking bishop captures and knight captures because who would give up this beautiful bishop? No one. Well, no one except Magnus. He went for activity and then it all worked out for him because this... Uh, it, with little time on the clock uh, for your opponent, this just uh, is worth more than an active bishop, obviously, if you are Magnus Carlsen. So uh, what can we learn from this? Uh, play uh, all, all, the, all the great moves, uh, you know, uh, in all the positions and you will be the greatest players in the world. Magnus finishes with 9 out of 9. Tomorrow is a new day. Will, uh, can he make it 18 out of 18? Uh, no one believes that, but no one believed he could do 9 out of 9, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. So yeah, uh, those were the games. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. It was pretty much a one-man show. Uh, Magnus finishes. I don't want to trick you guys. Let me just check the standings, but I believe three points ahead of everyone. Uh, let me just quickly check. Uh, yeah, Magnus with 20 out of 27, then Fabi with 17 out of 27, Nepo with 17 out of 27. So Fabi and Nepo are going at it back to back from the rapid section. It's just that Magnus just completely crushed everyone. Then Alireza with 15 out of 27 and Rapport uh, with 13 and a half out of 27 and so on and so on. So basically uh, what we will see tomorrow is a fight for second place. I don't think anyone will be fighting for first place. Magnus will win this uh, unless... I mean, I don't know what, what has to happen, but it's basically a fight for second place. 
Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you enjoyed this uh, a treat by Magnus. It's uh, you know a, a, a gift to, to all the chess lovers. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank James Eugene Cashman, John Austin, Paul Miller, Brad Roth, and uh, uh, Michael Marshall for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world, but mostly covering the final day uh, of the Super United Rapid and Blitz tournament uh, uh, being played in Croatia. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. And if you still haven't seen the uh, simultaneous exhibition by uh, young Ivano Mocic against every player of the Grand Chess Tour, do check it out. First link in the description below. Uh, see you soon.